The painting, which has become one of the most famous in the world, was initially perceived as a slap in the face to public taste. However, the events of the 20th century elevated it to the status of a cult masterpiece. At the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries, Edvard Munch's mental health was under threat. A disorderly lifestyle, excessive alcohol consumption, problems with women, in particular the breakup with Tula Larsen, aggravated the artist's condition. He was repeatedly treated in clinics, but it didn't help much. At the same time, his pictorial approach was being formed, which could be called a kind of therapy. Around 1890, Munch switched to symbolism. In his landscapes, nature becomes a reflection of a person's emotional state, a mirror of his soul. The Scream is one of Munch's many attempts to convey his impressions of a natural phenomenon. The artist wrote, in a tense state of mind, the landscape will make a certain impression on a person. By depicting this landscape, the artist will come to depict his mood. It is this mood that is the main thing, nature is just a means. There is no work of art in which the existential, primal fear of man is conveyed more expressively than in Scream. An asexual creature with a frightened expression on its face wanders over a bridge that goes into the depths of the painting. The artist sought to express his innermost feelings, while rejecting already known styles and trends. His painting methods are radical, the frontal character of the figure, extreme perspective, a landscape that seems to dissolve into a whirlpool of lines. Munch described the essence of the central image in his diary, I was walking along the path with two friends, the sun was setting, suddenly the sky turned blood red, I stopped, feeling exhausted, and leaned against the fence I looked at the blood and flames over the blue of a black fjord in the city my friends went on, and I stood trembling with excitement, feeling the endless scream piercing nature. The artist did not seek to draw a figure, he drew the sound itself, the state, the idea of universal unity. It is quite possible that the crimson color of the sky is not an exaggeration. Munch could actually see such a color. In 1883, a powerful volcanic eruption occurred in Krakatoa. A huge amount of ash was released into the atmosphere, which is why especially colorful, fiery sunsets have been observed around the world for several years. It is possible that the scream that Munch heard was not some kind of idea or hallucination. The largest slaughterhouse in Oslo and a psychiatric clinic were located near Ekeberg. The screams of the slaughtered animals, along with the screams of the mentally ill, were unbearable. It was typical for Munch to return to the same topics many times. There are about 40 versions of the scream, four of them are paintings, they appeared between 1893 and 1910, the rest of the works are graphic, including printed graphics and drawings on paper. There are also variations of composition and images. The scream was first presented to the public at the Berlin Exhibition in December 1893. It was conceived as part of the Freeze of Life, a program cycle of paintings about the spiritual life of man. Munch wrote about him, the Freeze of Life is conceived as a series of paintings connected to each other, which together should give a description of a whole life. The winding coastline runs through the whole picture, followed by the sea, it is always in motion, and a diverse life with its sorrows and joys flows under the treetops. The Freeze is conceived as a poem about life, love and death. The audience wondered how such a terrible picture could be possible. However, it was this work that became the program for Expressionism. It brought piercing loneliness and despair to art and became prophetic.